All right, so take me through uh, the moments after game two, Gary. Well, what's the first thing you heard? What's the, was it a chair? Was it the yelling? Uh, take me through the moments of, uh, of what happened in, this, in the Celtics locker room after game two. Okay, well, what happened what, – what, what we're um, – it's kind of – Yeah, take me through the setup because it must be much different. These are, not state of the, these are not state-of-the-art arenas. These are nice arenas for, like, a high school game and a college game, right? They have spruced it up. They've put all the special effects, the video boards. What the – you're talking about the locker rooms and some of the facilities are not NBA standards. They're nice. They're acceptable for, for three months, but they're not – so – the Celtics go into the locker room. They put a barrier up with the security guard. So Malika Andrews from ESPN and I were standing behind that barrier. There's also another way, if I, we walked all the way around, that we could go to, to the front and see the front door. We were sitting, we were waiting behind the locker room near where the player's restroom is. I've not, I haven't been in these locker rooms. We're not allowed in, obviously, because of COVID. So I can't tell you how many... Um, Restrooms are in the locker room, how big they are or whatever. I can't tell. I don't think it's that big where you could go and, and, you know, multiple players can go in. It's probably one or two stalls. So they put a ba- – there's a bathroom down the hall, short walk from the locker room outside where there's, I think, five or six stalls and, and players can go use the restroom. And there – it says players only restroom. Like, we could not go in that restroom. So – can you walk past that though? Or no, no? no, we were we were right in front of that bathroom. The barrier okay, okay, gotcha. started where the gotcha. front door of the where the opening of the bathroom was. Where the barriers, okay. Yeah. So and there's a security guard there. She gets clearance from the league. Okay, they're ready to address the media. So all of a sudden, Malik and I just hear noise, yelling, oh, like just multiple voices. Stuff getting hit in the wall. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, ah! you know, just multiple voices, loud, sounded like Brad. Like, it was not just Marcus. I just want to emphasize yeah. that. Marcus right. walked out of the room to the bathroom, and that's when he made his famous statement. Y'all on some – can I cuss here? Y'all – um Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Y'all on some bullshit. Y'all on some bullshit. And he just shook yeah. his head and walked into the bathroom, okay? The, the yelling and screaming continued, okay? It was not – it did not stop. There was stuff being thrown against the wall. We couldn't tell what it was, but it was literally – Marcus was in the bathroom a strong five minutes, okay? So it was still going on. Marcus walks out of the bathroom, back to the locker room. Lock yelling continues for 20-plus minutes. Stuff being thrown. The NBA folks are looking, like, real uncomfortable. Like, you know, (laughs) we can't do anything about this. We can't go in there. So it's just you and Malika standing there. Yes, and then there's some other media members on the other side facing the door. We are still behind the barrier. They walked all the way around because it's a circle. So they walked mm-hmm. all the way around and heard, but they didn't see Marcus like we did. On the bathroom they side. Yeah, they didn't hear Marcus right. say what he said like we did. So we got that insight. So it was lots of yelling, lots of screaming, lots of stuff hitting the walls for 20, 25 minutes. I've never heard that that long. I've heard stuff going on in locker rooms. I've heard... Locker rooms be closed for a while. I have never heard a 25 plus minute argument. You know, oh, you just exaggerate. No, I've been around. I ain't got to exaggerate for nobody. Because right. it was just a minor, like, brush up. Marcus gets into it with dudes on the floor. Like, if I mm-hmm. wanted to write everything, last year Kyrie Mitt left on um, Jerome Allen in Dallas. Right. During the game. If I wanted to write every time players went at it and said it was a huge deal, I could. No. This was long. This was unusual. I've never seen anything like this where stuff was hitting the wall and it sounded like Brad was in there. Because when Brad came out to the locker room for his interview, he was beat red, okay? So Brad was doing yelling, okay? Mm -hmm. I could tell voices. Now, Brad was yelling? Brad was yelling. Yeah, I read your your column. He was screaming, um, calm down, right? He was just, he was like, he was yelling. Assistant coaches were yelling. Jalen, Marcus, you know, now I can't say whether Shimmy was involved or like, you know, Carson Edwards. No, I mean, it was not a whole, the whole team wasn't fighting, but it was main guys that had issues with each other. Like, man, this is breaking down here because this is like, they are arguing for real and about stuff that was probably happened way before game two. This was not just one particular play. This was probably like, you've been doing this BS for 
like through two years now, things that just probably came out that were wow. that were not probably from about the game, but had been harboring. So that's what happened. That's what we heard. We came out. Marcus didn't talk. Jalen was really the only one that admitted something went down. But it was, I was told that it was crazy in there. It got crazy. 